talking about the nasal interfaces to connect to the CPAP circuit, several interfaces are available. Various nasal prongs manufactured by Hudson, Baby Plus, Inca, Drager, Fisher Pecal, Cypap, Arabella, Neopap are available. Nasal mat and nasal cannula, vapor thumb <coughs> are also used. CPAP can also be delivered by nasopharyngeal tube and endotracheal tube. When you're trying to pick an inter interface, you have to ensure that the nasal prongs follow the contour of the nasal cavity, which is curved as shown in the figure up here. The nasal interface with the curved prongs shown at the top here is a much better fit than the straight prong interface at the bottom of the screen. So if you want to direct CPAP, you want to direct it to the nasal passages, not to the brain. Uh, there are several cannulas available, and just to share with you, the Hudson cannula, which we use at Columbia, um, they come in six sizes, from zero to five, um, and the manufacturer has corresponding birth weights, uh, which match with the size of the cannula for the use. Similarly, the Baby Plus, um, which is also a curved cannula, they come in eight sizes, from zero to seven. The advantage of this particular brand is they're made of silicon. So they are not PVC and they are latex free. We use the two extremes, size seven and size zero for very tiny babies at Columbia University. Ram cannula is being used increasingly to deliver CPAP due to its ease of use. If you look at the FDA approval, it was only approved for oxygen delivery as an oxygen deli delivery cannula and not as a pressure delivering cannula. If you look at the data on the mean pre airway pressure that is generated at various CPAP settings with 60 to 80 percent of occlusion as recommended by the manufacturer and a closed mouth, Ram cannula only delivers delivers 60% less mean airway pressure compared to the short binasal cannula. Further, binasal cannula prongs offer less resistance. It's almost threefold less than the Ram cannula. If you look at the smallest Ram cannula size, uh, commercially available as preterm, it has 400 times the higher resistance when compared with the short binasal cannula. What about the high flow nasal cannula? Um, I think this data from Lavizari and his colleagues very clearly demonstrate that the end expiratory pressure that is generated with using this cannula, it correlates very poorly with the flow. If you look at, for example, at the weight adjusted flow of four liters per minute, high flow nasal cannula pressure could vary from anywhere from two centimeters of water to seven centimeters of water. So I would be very skeptical of using high flow nasal cannula as a pressure delivering device. If you look at the <clears throat> um, data on electrical activity of diaphragm during CPAP use and high flow nasal cannula use, and it's very clear uh, that the use of high flow nasal cannula is associated with increased diaphragmatic activation compared with nasal CPAP and also the respiratory rate and cycle dynamics suggest that CPAP may provide more effective respiratory support than the high flow nasal cannula. Uh, 